You're afraid for Hollywood. Hey, we're here in Hollywood. No, not really, but hey, wouldn't it be nice to be there for a Hollywood premiere? Lights and everything. <laughs> Love doing these backgrounds. It's so much fun. But hey, everybody, welcome. It's me, Alex, the man of Alexisms and uh, movie lists. And we finally come full circle. I started doing this in May for the May movies last year. And now we're in April. We made it. Wow, kind of sad. But movie theaters are starting to open up a little bit. Uh, March, we got to spring ahead. And uh, a few things have opened. Now. And uh, it's getting there. I know uh, Godzilla versus Kong opened yesterday. We'll see how that goes. I don't know if I'll see it in the theater. I really want to. I'd like to see it on a really big IMAX type screen. I mean, it is the two Titans facing off. We shall see. If not, there's HBO Max. <laughs> Depends. Uh, I actually got my first vaccine shot for COVID. So I'm ready. Get there. You know, I haven't yet to be in a movie theater since January of 2020, and that was January 1st. But looks like things are starting to open up, and uh, there's a lot of movies slated to come out. And we'll see. We'll see. The more people getting vaccinated, that's a good thing. That's a good thing. So, April is just you know, that month that's just starting to lead into May, which the summer movie season usually begins. Although the last, well, in 2019 and 20, actually 2019 and 2018, yeah. There's two big movies that came out in April, just a little bit ahead of May. You know, I was like, oh, they, they wanted to get it in a little early, those movies, but we'll get to them. But April has some good ones. Looked over the list, you know, taxes are due from a lot of people and get your tax return, go to the movies, <laughs> buy some movies, revisit some, like the ones we're going to have on this list. As always, you can hit me up and let me know if there's any you think that should be on the list or tell me your, some of your favorites. <coughs> These are some of mine for April. So without further ado, let's get into this and look at my list. So we have... Going back to, what is that, 1923. <coughs> Excuse me. Safety last. Harold Lloyd was such a physical comedic genius in the vein of Charlie Chaplin and Buster Keaton. Don't overlook him. And Safety last is a classic. You've seen that movie clip where the guy's dangling from uh, a building. That's him. And it's so good. Laurel and Hardy, from movie Way Out West, that was in there. Of course, a classic, Singing in the Rain. Many people have seen that. I actually saw Singing in the Rain first as a play. It was at the Bellport Playhouse in New York. Was it the Gateway Playhouse, Bellport? I don't know the name of the places, but they did a stage production. And they actually had, you know, rain coming onto the stage and the guy sang it. It was a very enjoyable show. And that movie is a classic with Gene Kelly and Debbie Reynolds. The original Cape Fear from 1962 is definitely worth checking out. If you've only seen the one directed by Scorsese starring De Niro, you should check out the original. It is very good. Robert Mitchum plays uh, the villain in that. Creepy. Good though. Ah, uh, yes, sometimes the hills are alive with the sound of music. It came out in April. Uh, one of my favorite sci fi movies. The original Planet of the Apes. Yes, 1968. Holy cow, the movie's a long time ago. Over 50 years old, you damn dirty apes. But the original is still one of the best, although Rise, Dawn, and War of the Planet of the Apes. It's a war for the Planet of the Apes, really good ones, as you saw on my other lists. Good political thriller, All the President's Men about the whole Watergate scandal with, with uh, Robert Redford and Dustin Hoffman. And it's definitely worth checking out. I saw it in film class first. Flashdance, one of my wife's favorites. Great soundtrack, lots of great dancing. Just one of the guys. An 80s uh, movie, you know, it's far-fetched by today's standards. And I think 
think we watched it recently, well, maybe two, three years ago. Like some of the stuff that teenagers said and did back in the 80s and got away with on film, especially towards sex. It's like, holy cow, they'd never be able to get away with that now. But it was an enjoyable romp. Raising Arizona is another one of my favorite Coen Brother movies. So out there at the end with the the Mad Max type warrior coming after Nicolas Cage for kidnapping those that the baby is funny. Secret of My Success, great Michael J. Fox movie that was a big hit. Uh, what's that? Colors, Dennis Hopper movie about gangs. What's his next one? I gotta leave my oh Major League. A good sports movie about baseball. Fun one with Tom Berenger, Charlie Sheen, Wesley Snipes. Ed Calm was a surprise. Young Nicole Kidman and Sam Neill take on good old uh, uh, Billy Zane, Stranded at Sea, who is a little more dangerous than you expect. It's a good thriller. If you've never seen it, check it out. Hey, sometimes you have to say anything. Classic 80s. Romantic comedy and so much more. John uh, Cusack. That'd be the last time you play a high school character. But memorable, of course, with him holding up the uh, boombox to Peter Gabriel's In Your Eyes. Gotta love it. And in the 90s, we started with Defending Your Life, good Albert Brooks comedy about the afterlife. One of the greatest action movies. I got to see in a theater for the first time, there was a film festival showing Hard Boiled, directed by the one and only John Woo, with Chow Young, Fat as Tequila, kicking ass and taking names. One of the greatest action movies of all time, for sure. Threesome, <laughs> good comedy from 1994. Um, yeah, kind of sad at the end, but. It was fun and enjoyable. The original Bad Boys, Will Smith and Martin Lawrence debuted in April of 95. Nice explosive cinematic debut of director Michael Bay. Starting on off, yeah, I don't know. What you gonna do? See the movie. Also that, that month from the same year, While You Were Sleeping came out. Nice little rom-com with Sandra Bullock. Year after, one of the best years in movies, 1996, got Primal Fear. And I'd never seen Edward Norton before that, but you definitely don't forget him after watching him in this courtroom thriller. You're after 1997, another good Kevin Smith movie, kind of made up from all rats, but Chasing Amy was released. That was a romantic comedy with a lot of little bit of a twist of the whole genre, but with Kevin Smith's usual antics and cool dialogue. Another movie you may not know is called Suckers. I saw that when I worked for uh, Cablevision and we had the channel uh, IFC. And they showed that. It was about car salesmen. And who are the suckers? <laughs> the people they sell cars to. Pretty funny. It was an offbeat movie, but if you have a way of finding it and checking it out, definitely do. U571 starts out the 2000s with Matthew McConaughey on that crazy submarine. Also, that month was one I looked forward to and enjoyed. I love the trailer for Frequency, as you'll see. It uses music from Hoffa. So I remember hearing this music, like, I want this piece of music. And I found it. I think Hoffa was on Cablevision when I was working there. I didn't really care for the movie, but it was playing. So we had to monitor their channel like, hey, I know that music. It was used in frequency. Now I had to get that piece of music, which I did. Uh, Morgan Freeman's final stint as Alex Cross was Along Came a Spider in 2001. Nice twist in that movie. Good thriller. It's a little underrated, but definitely worth checking out. Uh, we got The Real Hellboy, directed by Guillermo del Toro in 2004. That one was the better one. Well, I haven't seen the one, the new one, but that one was great. You picked a great actor to play, help what? Uh, was that 2004? Also the same month, we got 13 going on 30. Cute movie with uh, Jennifer Garner doing the body swapping 
comedy thing quite well. Also that same year, we had Mean Girls, script written by Tina Fey and starring Lindsay Lohan when she was sweet and innocent uh, and just acted and not got into trouble. And her performance was good. It was in the whole cast, it's so fetch. Stop trying to make fetch happen. <laughs> I can't help it, it's so fetch. Uh, another action comedy though, we have uh, Hot Fuzz with Simon Pegg. <laughs> yeah, it's a good callback on action movies. They talk a lot about Point Break. As you'll see, you gotta check it out. Good stuff. Disturbia, movie with Shia LaBeouf. Kind of a remake of Rear Window. But well done, nice modern take on it. Sometimes you gotta kick ass. That was, I can't believe that's 11 years ago. Good comic book movie, uh, definitely not for the kiddies, but uh, <laughs> colorful, explosively violent, profane, but very enjoyable. That same year we had Source Code with Jake Gyllenhaal. A really good movie where things keep changing over and over again, like he keeps reliving this moment. Definitely a nice surprise, it was so good. And one that actually I enjoyed was Water for Elephants, Reese Witherspoon. Uh, it's a little romantic, a little bit of elephants <laughs> and uh, kind of the romance of the circus. Her and Robert Pattinson, kind of an interesting pairing. All right, getting to the MCU now. One of the best MCM movies was Captain America, The Winter Soldier. Yes, usually they were waiting for May, but this one they pushed into April. It doesn't matter, it still made money and <clears throat> became this really incredible spy thriller, which was very different for what you were expecting from a superhero movie and still worked. It was great, very well done. One of my favorite MCU movies. And now we have Falcon and Winter Soldier on Disney Plus. We've got to see what that's all about. Uh, we also had Heaven is for Real. Yeah, um, oh, who's that actor? Uh, you know, I'm gonna kick my kick my booty. I don't see his face, but anyway, it was a good true story. This guy's son dies and briefly goes to heaven, comes back and explains what's going on, and people are having trouble dealing with it. But very well done. Uh, I definitely recommend it. One of the best live action remakes, way better than pretty much all the other ones was The Jungle Book from 2016. They expanded on things, they made it a little bit, a little more rich with character stuff, a little better flow of the story. John Favreau did a great job. Voice acting was great. <clears throat> then A Quiet Place came out in 20, is that 2018? <laughs> yeah, I just finally saw it, I think last year. What a good movie, very, lots of thrills and trills. And I, I was really impressed that John Krasinski directed it too. Wow, did a great job directing it with his wife, Emily Blunt. The sequel was slated to come out last year, but the pandemic delayed that but it's supposed to come out this year in May. So fingers crossed you get to see that. Oh, we kind of do a little bit of a time jump because the last two movies I'm gonna have together, but 2020, we got Shazam! No lightning bolt. <laughs> yes, good take on the character who's actually Captain Marvel in the comics. It was a well done movie, one of the best uh, uh, DCEU movies. Uh, to come out, and they did the they did the character quite well. well. I must say, Zack Snyder's Justice League that came out in March, which I have now added to my March list, was pretty epic. They did an incredible job. I broke my viewing into two days because it's four hours. Really well done. Major improvement from the original. And then, of course. Like I said, in a, uh, April, the end of April of 2018 and 2019, we had two Avengers movies. Starting off, of course, in 2018, marking the 10 year anniversary of the MCU was Avengers Infinity War. 
we got to see everybody in one movie, except Hawkeye. <laughs> they were all together. Although the Hulk, we only saw glimpses of. We still had Bruce Banner, but it wasn't full on Hulk. Combining all these characters into one movie was quite the undertaking. It all changed with the snap. It left you in suspense for a whole year. What happened to everybody? Will they come back? Of course they will. They'd be back in Endgame, which did end things in a pretty epic note with great final battle. Three hour movie, but the second highest grossing movie of all, all time, as of now. I wish you could have dethroned The Force Awakens, but came very close. And Endgame was very sad. But you never know. Multiverse of Madness, Doctor Strange, yeah, you never know. Things could change things around. You might see characters that perished come back. That's my bet, I'm wondering. But there you have it, folks. There's my list. You can check out the trailers. And yes, that wraps it up for me and my list. Thanks for checking out. Watch the trailers and let me know what you think. And then we're heading into May and you can always look at my May list. It could have expanded. Obviously, these lists will expand as I watch new movies and add them to the list. So you could check the lists out frequently and things may change. Uh, they will. New movies are coming out. There's movies I've never seen before, old movies, and I decided to put them on the lists there, which I have done. Well, enjoy the movies. You got your streaming services, and some have same day premieres. And you may be able to go to the movies. We're holding out. May this year, we mm, uh, hopefully we'll get Black Widow in the theaters, and summer movie season can begin a little differently because we may not be done with this pan, the strict restrictions of pan, the pandemic until Christmas maybe. But we're slated to have four MCU movies this year. We shall see. Top Gun sequel, a Quiet Place sequel. A lot brewing. Well, we, sh we shall see, we shall see. It's 2021 and hopefully it'll be more fun. <laughs> so thanks for checking us out and Appreciate it, guys, and uh, hopefully we'll be seeing each other in movies. And we could cut and print that. All right. Happy movie going, my friends. Bye.